Hi there, it's Sam from Tutor Cruncher here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to quickly get started scheduling lessons and taking payments on Tutor Cruncher. Before we can do this, we first need to add our users. Our users can be added via people here. You can see that there's four different user types. If you've signed up for the first time, you'll already have an admin profile, so we don't need to set up one of those, but we will want to create tutors, clients and students to be attached to the lessons that we're going to create. So first let's do tutors. To create a new tutor, I'm going to click create new tutor up here. I'm going to give them a name. And then I'm going to give them an email address. When I fill in their email address, it says here that a welcome email will be sent to this user. So I don't need to fill in any of this other stuff. If I want, the tutor can actually fill this in from their end. Um, this welcome email will prompt them to set up their password and finish completing their profile. So this is all I need to add in. The tutor profile has been created. So now I'm going to add in my first client. To do that, I'm going to navigate to clients. And I'm going to click create new client. And again, I'm going to add their name. Again, a welcome email is going to be sent to this client. If you have client login enabled, then they will receive an email prompting them to set up a password. And again, finish creating the rest of this information here. So we've got our student, we've got our client, and we've got a tutor profile there. So now we're ready to start scheduling them onto a lesson. To do that, we first need to create a job. To do this, I'm going to navigate to activity, jobs. This is a list of jobs that have already been created and whether they're happening or they've been finished. I'm going to create a new one. So I'll click create new job. I'm going to give this job a name. I can give it a job description as well if I want. I'm going to specify the charge rate, which is how much the client is going to be charged, either per hour or per lesson on this job. And I'm also going to assign a tutor's rate. This is how much the tutor will, of course, be making on, this, on lessons on this job. I'm going to save. And this is the job now. I'm going to add my student in. So we'll find Dora. There she is. I'm going to add my tutor in. There he is. I've added my students in now, so now we can create a lesson. So I'm going to click Add New Lesson. I'm going to give this a time. And let's say we want to do 11.30 math sessions with Dora every Monday. I'm going to give this a topic as well. I'm just going to call it Math Session. Awesome. So I'm going to schedule that in now. And this is what a lesson page looks like. You can mark it as complete or cancel it, or if you want, you can mark it as cancelled, but still charge. I'm going to go back to the job now. Once my client has been added, I can add a student to their profile by clicking add here on the students panel. And again, I'm going to give them a name and an email address. And they'll also be sent a welcome email. If I want, I can actually repeat this job. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to click Actions, Repeat, and then I can repeat this job on a weekly basis. So every one week on a Monday, I can stop this after a certain amount of sessions, or I can stop it on a specific date up to and inclusive of that date. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to run this from today until the end of March. I'm going to click Save there. Then if I go back to my job, you can see it's scheduled in five sessions all in one go for me, five weeks worth of sessions. And I can view those on the calendar. I go on the week view here, it should pop up somewhere. Yep, there it is. There's that lonely math session. If I get rid of this filter, I can see all of the sessions happening across my entire site. And of course, all of my users will have access to their own calendar for sessions that they've been scheduled onto. We've added our users in and we've scheduled in some lessons. Now let's build for them. To do that, I'm going to navigate to a lesson here, 
And imagine that it's now Monday, the 4th of March, and we want to mark this lesson as complete so we can build for it. To do that, I'm going to mark this as complete. It's going to redirect me to fill in a lesson report. So I'm going to fill in this report. I'm going to save that. And then it's going to send that report to the client immediately. You can have it so that admins have to approve these before they're sent. To then raise an invoice for this lesson, what I'm going to do is navigate to accounting, draft invoices. Here are some I made earlier. I'm going to click generate invoices and then I'm going to specify my cutoff date. So I'm going to go all the way over to March. There. I'm going to do it from March till We've added our users, we've scheduled in some lessons. Now let's bill for those lessons. To do that, I'm going to find one of my sessions here that I want to mark as complete. For instance, this lesson here. And let's say it's Monday the 26th of February and I want to invoice for this lesson now that it's been completed. To do that, I'm going to first mark it as complete. It's going to redirect me to fill in a lesson report. I'm going to save that report. It's going to send that report via email to the client. If I wanted to raise an invoice for this lesson, what I would do is navigate to accounting, draft invoices, and I'm going to generate my invoices. I'm going to specify the date range for the invoices that I want to generate. So if I go over to February 2024 here, and I go from the 1st till the 29th of February, and I click regenerate, it's going to find all of the sessions that were marked as complete in that date range, and it's going to create invoices for them. So we can see here, this one to Mary Jones, that client we created earlier, that math session is being reflected here. And if I want, I can confirm this invoice and I can raise it. When I raise it, this is when the invoice will actually send via email. So I'm going to click raise invoices. When I do that, it's going to redirect me to my raise invoices panel here, which is just a list of all the invoices I've sent to all of my different clients and whether those are paid or unpaid, or if you're doing automatic charging, they'll go into pending. If I go onto this invoice we just sent, this is what it looks like from my perspective. So we can track the balance updates, the payment events, we can track all the emails that were sent to it. So in this case, Mary would have received this email. We can of course customize these emails if we want to. And this pay now button, um, you'll need Stripe um, integrated with your TutorCruncher platform for that to work. It's really easy to set up. That'll be in another video. If I look at the top of this invoice here, we can see the controls for it. So we can review the report that relates to it. We can pay it from credit if you're using credit requests. We can take a manual payment to mark it as paid via some other me uh, method other than Stripe or GoCardless. So you can take external payments uh, via TutorCruncher. If you were using Stripe and you wanted to access the card payment portal, you can do so by clicking take card payment. And this card payment portal is exactly how it will look like for the client as well. So they can just fill in their address, their details, and then they can pay that. And then that invoice will be marked as paid. If I wanted to take prepayment for lessons, as opposed to paying for them in arrears, like we've just done here, what I could do is navigate to draft credit requests. And if I click regenerate up here and specify a cutoff range for the future, like I'll do here. So I'll run this from today until the 29th of March and I click regenerate. Tutor Cruncher will look through all of the sessions I have planned in that date range in the future and it will create credit requests for those. Credit requests are just pro forma invoices. So they're invoices that for lessons that have not yet happened basically. So if I go on this one to Shelley here, here are all those lessons that she has planned in that date range. And what I can do is click confirm here. And then once it's confirmed, I can raise it. It's going to ask me if I want to send her an email notification, which I do. So I'll click raise credit requests here. And then again, it will redirect me to my raise credit requests panel, which is again, a list of any credit requests that I've sent to my clients and whether they're paid or unpaid or pending or not. So if I go on a credit request here, I can send her a reminder, I can mark it as paid if she paid externally. I can again access the card payment portal from my end if I need to. And 
I can track the balance updates, the payment events, ex the exact same process as invoices. And if I go on this related email, this is the email that would have been sent for her. So it lists all of the different lessons that she's having and she can click pay now on those. So that's pretty much how it's all done. Everything from user management to scheduling lessons to invoicing for those lessons. Um, once you've got the hang of those three sort of main areas, um, then it's really up to you where you go from there. You can set up Stripe so you can start taking automated payments. Um, you could maybe look at the email definitions and edit the emails that you're sending to your different users. Um, you could white label your system with a custom domain. Um, or you could even start setting up some lesson reminders. So it's really up to you where you go from here. Um, but there will be tutorials and other guides um, to help you along the way. So thank you for watching.